Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Open eCry Market Commentary for the week of October 28th. My name is Toby Gennaro from Trade with Precision, and we'll just be taking a look at what's on tap for the markets this week. We'll get started here by taking a look at the S&P 500 by looking at the ES futures contracts. And as we normally do, we'll look at the... Uh, uh, the charts from the top down here looking at the monthly chart we have uh, roughly about another four days on this candle right here but once again there, there's really no quit here on the monthly chart um, anticipating that uh, that pullback into the moving averages but we're just not getting any signals that are telling us that's going to happen anytime soon so we're back off to uh, another higher high another higher low on the monthly chart and this candle will close out on thursday of the upcoming week here moving over to the weekly chart the level that's setting up here is right around that uh, 1706 level so anticipating uh, another pullback on the weekly chart but uh, really looking for one of these uh, indecisive candles these smaller indecisive candles at the top looking for that overextension and then uh, potentially that's when we've been getting these pullbacks as you can see on a lot of these basically the last uh, three pullbacks same thing has happened so all the pullbacks in the buy zone have been happening on the weekly chart getting these uh, really nice setup candles right within that 10 20 period moving average so things still looking incredibly bullish here on on the equities markets uh, as a whole uh, the daily chart not really showing anything different we're really on basically a three-week run uh, almost a four-week run if you look at the um, uh, the weekly chart and so that's uh, that's typically what these runs have been they've been anywhere from uh, four to sometimes six weeks uh, before getting the pullback so I'll we'll probably have another uh, week or two left. I just have to look for uh, the overextension, look for some divergence then on the 480 charts and some of these other charts, maybe even the daily. But for right now, we've got a higher high in place, um, showing a little bit of divergence here on the 480 and showing some, uh, some definite divergence there on the 240. Um, so from that perspective, um, uh, the market may be uh, getting set up here for, uh, for a pullback. We do have some news coming out right in the middle of uh, earnings season. Uh, the feds are coming out uh, this week as well with the uh, uh, the interest rate announcement uh, amongst uh, some other news. So uh, that might uh, give cause for the market to uh, to pause here a bit. But uh, again, just looking for these pullbacks uh, back into the buy zone on these charts between that 10, 20 period moving average, the trend flow trade that we're teaching in the advanced course, and then uh, just getting on board for the ride, uh, going higher to new highs until we see some sign that the trend is changing and a lot of times you know these trends are going to change uh, when they're when they're this strong we're here uh, on a, a four year plus bull run uh, they're going to change on some major fundamental news is typically what's going to happen so uh, until we get that uh, we're just going to stay with the trend here and and look for what's happening uh, in the charts technically the russell 2000 contract looking at the small cap stocks uh, again uh, higher highs higher lows here on the monthly chart so very similar to uh, to the big cap uh, index, the S&P 500, um, on the uh, Rus on, on the Russell contract here on the weekly chart, looking at that uh, that bullish candle setup that we announced uh, just a couple weeks ago. Uh, basically, the trend flow setup got a little bigger candle than what we'd like to see here. So whenever we get these larger candles and they're not small like some of these ones that we had uh, previously, uh, if you're going to take a trade off the weekly chart, really makes for um, for a lot of risk when you calculate the entry from the stop. So once you get that trade setup we get a break of the high we can actually go down to some of the lower time frames even the 480 the 240 the 120 or even lower to find our setup going long and you'll have all of the uh, moving averages in alignment for that trend flow trade or even some of the momentum breakout trades so uh, even though we have a big candle here uh, it's a good indicator uh, that we're going long we did have an issue there with uh, being right around that 1080 level but it just punched right through that uh, pretty handily and um, just by using some of the lower time frames, we can actually guard ourselves against uh, that uh, that risk of the large candle just by having um, a tighter stop in. But uh, moving down on the charts here to the um, to the daily chart, we see just basically just a sideways consolidation here. The moving averages look like they're catching up to the price. We've got some slight divergence here on the 480 chart, similar to uh, the ES, and then some some divergence here on the 240 as well. So we wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit of pullback. Uh, at this level right here but um, again everything's looking very strong um, in this move we don't have really any divergence here um, even on the 60 minute maybe just slightly right there on the 60 minute we do have some divergence on uh, on the 120 minute chart um, but really not that strong we really just have almost kind of a flat level developing there with the third touch trending up into that flat level so it looks like we might get a break uh, higher here before we get um, any kind of a significant pullback 
Um, so looking through these charts here, the level uh, for pullback would be um, really somewhere around that 1080 level. But once again, we just haven't been getting pullbacks on on that daily chart. The pullbacks have been deeper, and they've been in the buy zone on the uh, on the weekly chart. So 1080 might be a level, but it might be a level that's going to be respected on the uh, on the weekly chart. Here I'd be looking for something potentially maybe on the 1060, depending on how much farther this market runs before the next weekly pullback. But 1060 is already right in and around that 10 period moving moving average. So um, so we could be trending here a little bit higher and then eventually get um, get that pullback and that might be the next level. So in looking at uh, at these charts, both the uh, the big caps and the small caps, uh, just a lot of strength still showing here, and we're going into the holiday season, which uh, should add some more strength to this. But uh, we do have to get through uh, earnings season this week, and we do have some uh, Fed announcement coming out, and uh, and a number of other things. So I want to be apprised of that. Um, but again, just looking for those pullbacks into the buy zone on some of these charts, and looking to get long with that uh, trend flow trade strategy. And we'll take a look at a foreign currency pairing here, looking at the dollar Swiss. And current level that uh, grabbed my attention here on the monthly chart, uh, flirting with this level here for a while. And had a number of touches in through here for uh, uh, really almost the past year. Finally got a break below that level, which is pretty significant. And so it looks like uh, we're going to be continuing down here. The charts are all rolled over. Um, the weekly as well. We've got the 10, the 20, the 50 in alignment, moving to the downside. And we have a couple of levels in here. This 90-50 level uh, is one that interests me. And then there's uh, the 91, basically the 91-4 level that um, if the moving averages continue to push lower uh, any type of rally back into this zone. And we see a rejection candle or a bearish candle in and amongst that 10-20 period moving average. Could be met with a lot of selling pressure at that point, pushing this market uh, back down uh, a little bit further. And looking at the daily chart, you can see this 91.6 level is really just kind of another level in and around uh, those two levels I just mentioned. Had a series of touches in and around there. Any kind of rally back up into that level uh, more than likely is going to be met with um, with some selling pressure. So uh, overall, the uh, the dollar has been down. Uh, could potentially be rallying uh, back up this week. There's a little bit of overextension on the dollar index. So taking a look at that and uh, staying with the overall downtrend in the U.S. dollar and looking at the um, uh, the dollar Swiss right here looks like we could be uh, we could certainly be uh, be pointing lower here and all the higher time frames are certainly uh, rolled over all the moving averages in alignment to the downside. So really just looking for a rally back up into some of these levels and then looking for that trend flow setup to uh, catch a move back lower again. So pretty good uh, pretty good looking downtrend there on on the dollar Swiss. So there's the outlook for the markets this week on U.S. indices and a foreign currency pairing. I'd also like to make you aware of a webinar coming up on October 29th, Tuesday this week at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and that would be trading with a day job. So go ahead to OpeningCry.com. You can get registered for that one. So we'd like to thank you for watching the Opening Cry Market Commentary for the week of October 28th, and we look forward to speaking to you next week on the Market Update.